a test kitchen. I think that might have been my test kitchen. I wish I'd heard your speech beforehand. I would have added that into mine. Um, my name is Nicole Martin, and I am here to talk to you a little bit about authentic learning adventures. And what I'd love to share with you first is that I've never considered myself an adventurous person. I do not like heights. I don't care for roller coasters, definitely not airplanes, and I certainly wouldn't jump out of one. I typically had trouble keeping up with my friends on long bike rides, and I hate camping. You heard me, Bo Adams. <laughs> and so what I want to tell you, though, is that thanks to the people that I've had the opportunity to be around and the experiences that I've had, over the last year, I've realized that I am adventurous. And I think all of it stemmed from the experiences I had as a child. And I would just love to share with you some of those experiences, because most of them happened outside of the classroom, though some happened within the walls of the school. In June of 2016, we traveled to Boulder, Colorado, to Watershed School, to the Traverse Conference. And that conference has the main feature of expeditionary learning. And I had the opportunity of att to attend an just absolutely incredible expedition. We were loaded up on buses and headed to a large park area in Boulder where we were ex given the details about a problem that they were having, which is there's not enough housing for people who need it. And with that, we learned also about the environmental factors of potentially building a new site. We learned about what it would be like for neighbors. We learned from the people in the park what it would feel like to lose some of that land. We learned about birds that were there that could become endangered because of that change. And we in groups, with our whiteboards, as you can see here, hauled out there, we met for several hours trying to figure out this problem. We read editorials. We read other literature. We met with external experts. We talked to students from the watershed school who had been studying it all year. And in small groups, we came up with pitches on what we believed should be the solution to the problem. And all that to say is that it was just absolutely amazing to be outside and learning. Yes, we hit social studies. Yes, we hit literature. We collaborated. We communicated. But more importantly, we were outside and in the thick of where the problem was occurring. And that made the difference to me. At that moment, I was hooked on expeditionary learning. I was ready to adventure. I got on the bus back, and um, Dr. Peterson, Bear, Blair Peterson was sitting next to me, and we were like, blah, 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 we are going to do this. We are going to bring this back to Mount Vernon. And sure enough, we did. Starting in August, that when we got back, we launched expeditionary learning, both of our teachers and our students in lower school. So fast forward a couple weeks, and I was back in Atlanta, and I'm throwing the kids in the car, and we drove to Connecticut. And that in itself is an adventure that I will not um, share the details with you. But, um, but I beat my time, which was 16 hours and 20 minutes um, straight. But that's not for today. Um, so my parents live in Connecticut, and they are moving to Florida. And so my task that trip was to pack up my childhood bedroom. And um, in doing that, I have tons and tons of photo albums. And I started looking through the photo albums and saw that over the course of my childhood, I actually went on a bunch of adventures. Perhaps I am adventurous. This particular adventure that I would love to share with you happened when I was about 10 years old. My parents pulled me out of school for a week, and we took a cruise to the Caribbean. And... Um, my parents had to work with the school quite a bit to get all of my homework and all this, the things that I would miss while I was gone. And I had a backpack loaded down with just a crazy number of textbooks and notebooks and workbooks and worksheets, of course. And um, so I made it this goal that I was going to knock out all of the work on the plane so that I could enjoy my vacation and not have to learn or do any schoolwork. So I did my social studies reading, and I answered the questions at the end of the chapter, and I'm sure I answered lots and lots of math problems, and I had that big, thick anthology of reading that you had to do, and so I summarized a bunch of those. Um, it was a really heavy backpack, actually. And so we, we embark on this cruise. We're in the Caribbean, and one of our first stops is in Grenada. And I don't know if anybody's ever been there before, um, but it is quite a small island, and um, we left the cruise ship, and we were on a taxi heading out to the town to do a little shopping. And along the way, I came across this sign, thank you, USA, for liberating us. And at 10 years old, I was like, what? 
what does this mean? And my curiosity was like, bing, 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 ready to go. Um, first of all, I had no idea that the U.S. needed was needed in Grenada. I had no idea, was there a war? Was there not a war? I think I know what the word liberating means, like liberty, Statue of Liberty, but I, I wasn't quite sure. And so I started asking my parents all of these questions, like that certainly wasn't in the social studies textbook I was reading on the plane. Like this is way more interesting because I was there and I saw it. And so for the whole rest of the taxi ride into town, into Grenada, um, I just looked out of the window what did I see? What people did I see? What animals did I see crossing the road? The roads were bumpy. They weren't paved like my roads. The houses were different. And I was just infatuated by this island. And it completely opened my eyes up to the people and surrounding people and things surrounding me. So we got into town. And um, the first thing a 10-year-old wants to do is you know, buy some toys and trinkets and t-shirts. And I found myself at this spice market. And there, I was introduced to spices I had never heard of. They smelled so good. It was this bustling market. And instead of purchasing a t-shirt or a toy, I spent all of my personal money on spices. And so, which totally makes sense with my nickname now, um, <laughs> which is all that to tell you that the learning I did that day was more than I probably would have done in the four walls of the classroom at my school. I was haggling prices. I had to figure out currency differences between the American dollar and the Eastern Caribbean dollar, which at that point I actually didn't know how to do, but I figured it out. I also learned that there were more spices than I'd ever known before, and I was ready to learn what they were and how to cook them. And this is my moment where I realized I fell in love with cooking. And it was in this moment, this picture, that I look back at now and know that these are some of the spices I still cook with today. In particular, one, I bought a bag of cinnamon and I'd never seen it in like a little Ziploc bag, but it was fresh, it was new, and I swear every time I used it, I would only allow myself to use a little bit because I was afraid the bag would go, and when would I go back to Grenada? Can't get cinnamon anywhere else. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, we got home, and, and here, so here I am back in my childhood bedroom again, and I'm going through these photo albums after photo albums of pictures like this, but of different experiences, and I came to this moment where I realized that, that it all starts here that I fell in love with cooking, that I fell in love with adventuring, I fell in love with the outdoors. I've been expeditioning and adventuring my whole life, and I never really knew it until going to that conference about expeditionary learning and looking back at some of my childhood experiences through photo albums. And I'm so thankful that I did that because I learned so much about how I learned and the experiences that I had outside the four walls of the classroom. The courage that I had on that day, haggling prices in Eastern Caribbean dollars, I think shaped me to make some other choices and other decisions as an older student and as an adult. One of those was applying for a semester at sea. I went to boarding school in Newport, Rhode Island, and I decided my senior year that I was going to apply for the winter trip, which I don't know if anyone's been to Rhode Island in winter, um, but it's about a balmy 30 degrees with whipping wind and um, a lot of rain and some snow. So I decided Bahamas in the winter, yes. And so um, here I am on Geronimo. I went to a school called St. George's and they had a 42 foot sailboat for seven students and two adults. And the goal of this trip is that they had a um, partnership with the a university in Florida where we would tag sharks and turtles for their research and send in their data and new tag information. So I was accepted on this trip and um, we headed out. We left from West Palm Beach, Florida. I had sailed a couple times in childhood. I grew up in Connecticut on the ocean, but I certainly did not know how to sail a 42-foot boat from West Palm Beach, Florida to the Bahamas. No idea. Um, but I did, did get on the boat, and we sailed all through the night that first night. Um, actually, that picture, the one before this, was, was me on the high side of the boat on one of our 24-hour shifts. And the experiences that I had on that boat far outweighed what my peers were doing in the classroom at the same time. So we were required to bring some schooling with us. We had some, some books and some classes that we were taking, more of an independent study on the boat but we also received a marine biology credit and a literature credit for reading Moby Dick um, while on board, which I think is a sick joke <laughs> now, now, that I, now that I understand um, what all that entailed. Um, so we got our schoolwork done really early in the day, and 
Honestly, we probably didn't do a very good job of it. But the whole point was to get outside and get out in the water. We explored all these little mangroves and some inhabited and uninhabited islands in the Bahamas, and we were searching for turtles. And so we would get in this little zodiac boat with our mask and snorkel on and go through all the mangroves looking for turtles. And when we found one, we would chase it in the zodiac, and as it tired, it would come up for air. And that's when I, at 17 years old, flew out of the Zodiac boat and grabbed a turtle and stood up and was, ah, yes, I got a turtle, my first turtle. Um, so I don't know if anybody in here has ever tried to catch a sea turtle, but they're, they're kind of heavy. So <laughs> the captain of the boat did have to jump out and help me out a little bit there. Um, but I was so proud of this. And this is the tag that I put in it. We drew blood, we measured it, we weighed it. And some of the turtles that we caught on that trip, about 50 in all, um, some of the turtles actually already had tags on them. So it was fascinating to me to see where they had come from and where they'd traveled and how much they had grown in that amount of time. I also speared my first crayfish. We trolled behind the boat and caught a shark. Um, I learned how to patch a boat because one night a storm came in and it pushed our boat into a concrete wall. Um, we did not sink, but could have happened. Um, what we did on that trip with the inhabitants that, and civilians that we met on some of the islands, the exploring that we did, I don't think that was repl replicable in the classroom at the same time. This experience for me fed into my love for the ocean and the beach and water. I didn't want to snorkel again for a really long time with the number of times that I had to be out there on that trip, but it was hard work. Living in close quarters on a 42-foot boat with nine other people with no land for days, requires an amount of collaboration and communication that I hadn't really witnessed yet. An amount of determination and hard work that I also hadn't experienced yet. But I think it shaped me and helped me become a better person and a stronger person because of it. And I think that this turtle in particular um, is a symbol of some of the choices and things that I've applied for since then that have been very important to me, and this trip in particular was one of them. We all know that adventures start when we have the ability to go out on one, that we take the risk and we do it. Not everybody has going to have the opportunity to go into the ocean or to visit another country necessarily, but we do have the opportunity to leave the four walls of our classrooms. We can walk down the hall, we can go outside, we can hop a MARTA train, we can go to the Chattahoochee, we can go to a city center, we can go visit an area of a city or a town that we've never experienced before, and learning is everywhere. Deep learning can happen anywhere, but to actually experience it and smell it and hear it and meet the people involved, that's a deeper learning experience than reading about it in a textbook. These are my two kids. We went on a hike. Um, this past weekend, and what I want to encourage you to do is to be adventurous yourselves. My moment of visible empathy is when I realized that I had been adventuring my whole life, and I want that for my children, too. I want them to have those deep, rich experiences where they can wonder, they can wander, they can be curious, they can ask questions and want to know more. This, this picture um, is a rare image of them talking. Um, <laughs> They were not arguing. Um, one was not trying to get three feet in front of the other to be first. This was a really special moment, and my husband actually caught it first. And I was like, oh, let's put it in my presentation. Could, could you do it portrait style, you know, landscape rather than portrait? You know, it's got to fit on the slide deck. Um, but this is, this is the moment that just makes me wonder, you know, how much more we can be doing? How much more can we adventure with our students and be curious with our kids? And I would encourage each of you to have those moments. Think about your schools. Think about the students where you are. Think about your family members, if you have children, if you have friends. Go out on an adventure. It's not hard. But the experience of wondering and wandering doesn't take much. Some sneakers are probably a good start, some water, a cell phone, and some money, if you're with my children. Um, that's really all it takes in a sense of wonder and adventure. And you can go anywhere. We went to a, a new hiking area we'd never been to before, and we stumbled upon fairy houses, a whole trail of fairy houses. Now, I'll admit that my children are of that age where they're becoming not cool, and so I think I was the most mesmerized by the fairy houses um, than anyone else in, in the party, in the Martin party. But we, we noticed and we saw, and it made me think like, oh, 
I wonder if we could adventure somewhere else. I wonder if I could have a class at Mount Vernon and build fairy houses, and then we could go to... And it just kept going and going and going, and I got excited because of this adventure. The adventures that I took early in my life, I think, paved the way for some of the other things that I did later. Um, one of the things that I'm proud of is I applied to teach at a summer boarding school when I was in college. I'd never taught a day in my life, but I taught... I, applied to teach reading at a boarding school and, and got it and, and did that and didn't know a single person there and moved to New Hampshire for the summer. It was beautiful and gorgeous and hard, but it was an experience and I grew from it and I really fell in love with teaching that year because of it. I also applied to teach at a school to be a founding faculty member. Um, I signed that contract and there was not a single student yet enrolled in that school. It's an adventure. I also applied to um, participate in a Fulbright scholarship to Japan where I learned about culture and education there. I, again, didn't know a single person, but embarked on this amazing trip for a month in November um, to Japan. And all that's to say is I think these experiences early on in life outside of the classroom walls just led to this adventurous nature that I'm starting to realize that I have, even if I don't like camping, and even if I don't necessarily love flying, um, it, it led me to believe that there's more out there for us, and I want to challenge each of us to do things that are a little bit out of our comfort zone. This is me hiking a 14er last week in Boulder, Colorado. Um, it was really hard, 14,000 feet, but I did it, and I'm so proud that I did it. I think I would wait a little while before I did it again, just because, you know, it's still pretty fresh in my mind. Um, <laughs> but I would do it again. And I just, I, I think that the more that we adventure outside and the more we allow our students to engage in those type of experiences, the deeper learning is going to become. The adventures outside the four walls of classrooms, they shape us. They shape our students and they shape us as teachers and adults. We don't stop learning. We never stop learning. And so going out with your students and with your faculty and with your families We'll continue to learn deeply because of it. So I would encourage you all sitting here to think about one adventure before the end of the summer that you'd be willing to take, either with a group of students, friends, children, family members if you like them, and head out <laughs> and go experience something new. You might not even know where you're going, but go try it out because I think that we'll all learn and be stronger because of it. I think we all need to get outside the four walls of our classrooms and learn. So get out there. Thank you.